Hello kiddies, welcome to Toby Sonics, quick make some noise for all your professional noise making needs. What have we got today? We've got a plate plug in. Red Plate 140 from the good people at Artoria. And I kind of get into it here. That's right, kiddies, it's, it's an in-depth demo. It goes on for days. Peter Jackson's been brought into direct. We're going to have to do this one in parts. Coming up now, part one. So we've got some wet dry. Completely out. So if like I've got it right now where I've got the plate sitting on the, um, the channel itself, you're going to be blending wet dry. Typically you'd put reverb on an auxiliary or an FX channel, but we'll play on the track for a minute. So we've got some drive. Got different model emulations. Punchy. Classic EMT and modern. Yeah, so you can hear the modern's just that little bit cleaner. We can affect a take home. Oh yeah. Um, so you're getting into a much more kind of experimental kind of sound. And we can affect width. Yeah, full stereo, and then. The advantage of that is it's going to allow you to create separation in your mix. So for the vocals, you may not want them to be full width. If we bring back in the ambient sound. And start to dial back the width. You get better separation from the ambient, which is pan wide, and the vocals that are tucked in a little bit. Take the blend down a bit. Push the whiff a bit. So if we go back wide. If you listen to the ambient sound, It's not as present. As I dial the width back, the ambient sound starts to find its space again. It's kind of nice. Let's dial the blend back up again so we can hear what we're doing. We can also press this button up here and ooh, lots of other things. Now, plate verbs I quite like on a pre-delay of zero milliseconds because it just gives a little bit of width uh, on a vocal. It helps it breathe in the mix. Um, but typically, you can push pre-delays right back. Pre-delay is a weird thing. Um, the longer the pre-delay, typically, the closer the sound will sound. Um, that you're sending to the reverb. So if you want something to be up front, you put a longer pre-delay on its, on its reverb. Um, you do get more of a, an actual echo effect, so you tend to blend it in a little bit lower. And you can get weird. If you want to automate, you can get weird pitch shifters. So if we go for about 15 milliseconds, that's a... That is standard room sound. Plates always sound a little bit odd with pre-delays for me. Let's take some of that low out. 
it's tempting to high pass reverbs a lot. If you take it right out, if we bring the pedal down back to zero dB, you start to lose the size that it's given the vocals. So bring it down to about here, to about 200. We get a bit more size. We go back up to four. It's quite nice there actually, but it's thinned the vocal out more. I quite like that. I like you to be able to feel reverb rather than hear it. But depending on the sound you're going for, you might want to bring this back down here. Get a really nice sense of size on that vocal now. Um, we've got some post EQ, which is actually on at the moment. Take it off. Um, and it's acting with uh, high low shells. So it's pulling off a little bit of 48 hertz, a little bit, minus 24. So let's see, let's push it the other way. Don't want to make much of a difference on this. Go up here. Ooh, grungy. So that's just giving you a little bit more control over those lows. I'd, I'd be tempted to come down to 95-ish maybe, particularly if you've got like live drums and stuff, a lot of bass cut out that, that sort of sub and low area. And uh, what are we doing here? We're doing a little bit of low on this. Reverbs are strange. In your mind, you think reverbs sound great with a lot of high frequency. Let's see what happens. The moment we're coming in at about 6,000 6, hertz, 6K, and we're dropping about uh, 12 dB. Let's push it right. Oh dear, not nice. Let's go right up. Let's go down here. That's kind of cool. Now I like that, but what I then want to do um, is we'll use a pro cue that you could use. And but I'll tell you what, let me grab. So using the fancy effects, let's just use comes with Cubase, frequency. Um, so let's just take out. Now we're taking out from 10K. That's kind of nice. If I take that out. That's without the additional low pass. Let's put the low pass back in. I still probably want to take some of that high out a little bit. Let's come down, say, to... Maybe here. It's quite nice. We're down now where we were before with the original... Um, High shelf was actually at about 6K, we're at 6K. Uh, we're G flat or F sharp. The vocal is in the key of B, so. F sharp is the fifth of B, so. It's kind of, sometimes it's useful to EQ by musical note. I quite like that, it's kind of cool. We have some modulation. Pre and post, that's interesting. Start it right up. So how's we go post? Coming up. Probably not. <laughs> okay. Oh, there we go. That was hard work. It's because it's, uh, it's new, the switch is a little stiff there. Yeah, 
pulled it out. No. Try and click on that. <laughs> Arturia may need to work on this bit. This is not easy to operate. Uh, pre. No. Oh, I'm going to herniate myself. Let's turn it off. Let's see if we can do it this way. It's this vintage gear, man. You know, you've got to get some deoxidizer, spray it on that thing, man. It's got stuck. Or maybe some WD-40 or something. I don't know. It's got... It's just rusted up a bit, I think. Oh, there we go. I did it. I did it. Oh, hang about. You could... C'est très français. Ici. Ici. Je clique. Là. Et là. Non. Là. Pas là. Ça, ça marche pas. Ici, ça c'est très bon. Ça c'est très bon. Pour les Français, ça c'est facile. Parce que les Français sont parfaits. Mais pour les Anglais, c'est difficile. C'est vraiment difficile. Oh, Brexit. Ah, ça va. I quite like it post. It's good like that. Put a little bit more of this on. Overcooked it, overcooked it. That's nice. Try some dry. In theory, what the driver should be doing is kind of compressing it a little bit with the saturation and also making it feel a little bit wider because it's shifting the sine wave to a square wave. Interesting, uh, interesting harmonics, a little bit of tone and tombra, as it's referred to. Oh, that's kind of cool. Definitely an effect. Um, so what we'll try now... Shh, indeed. Okay, so what I've done is added an auxiliary. Um, and... All we're doing is copying and pasting these two effects across. So let's have a listen to it as we have it on the track. Ooh, baby. Right. So let's bring the effect in. Take this out. Ooh, baby. Now the only difference we're going to do just blend it full wet. That's it. Everything else is the same. Now, the first advantage we have with the track is we can sort of shape where we want the reverb. So, we can use the jewel panner to just tighten it up. What that does for us is it helps to separate it from the soundscape. Yeah, if I put it back like this, Stereo combine. Let me pull it in. We're getting better definition on the soundscape. Next thing that we can start to do is we can start looking at some compressions. So we can bring in a compressor we've set up here. That's just tightening it up. This is a stock U base. One of the things I really like about this compressor is if you look, if I open up the RMS, so now it's been triggered by RMS. As I dial it towards peak, it will set the reverb back as it starts to catch those transients more. Sets it a little bit back. We've got on a smooth ratio. The lower the ratio, the smooth the compression, the less you'll notice it. The higher the ratio, the more you can hear it. We're laying a little bit of the transients through, not too many. It's tempting to do that with this kind of thing. Hitting transients too hard on an attack can cause artifacts and aliasing and things like that. It's usually a good idea to just let them breathe a little. A little hold, auto-release, auto-makeup. We're taking out. 
about that, six to eight dB, something like that. So let's take that out. It's just tidying it up. And then what we're doing is we've got Tap on Pro C, which we're side chaining to the vocal line. So let's bring that in. And it's just ducking it a little bit. Yeah, you can hear the vocal line here. That's what's triggering it. It's just ducking it by about 2dB. And the great thing about this is we can go on a mid setting, just squeeze it. And this is all just dialed in by ear, we're not really worrying about it too much. Go with what feels right. Now what we can do is if I start to open up the threshold more, if I start to bring it down a bit, then what we, the vocal line will start to get drier and drier, if you have a listen. So you have that big contrast from when the vocal sounds to the sustain. Which is kind of cool. Let's put it out. Nice like that. Yeah, we're on a pretty low ratio. So, let's just blend this in now where we want it. Great thing about Cubase, you just stretch it up like that. Gives you a little bit more room to work. Let's mute that. Let's go back to what we had before. It sounds pretty cool. Let's take this out. We have just that little bit more control with the auxiliary effect. And typically with vocals, that's the way you're going to want to do it. It will vary from instrument to instrument. That's the way you're going to want to do it. 